Hi. Hello, Professor. Hi. That's so good to see you. And I'm, I'm yeah. really extremely sorry for, you know, not uh, getting on with my video. There's some connection problem. The weather is very rough in Orissa. And so, and of course, uh, John is there. I think uh, he was the one who had introduced me and you. So again, uh, a big thank you to John for getting me introduced to such a, a wonderful person. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, so we can uh, we can have your talk, on, uh, Professor. You can go ahead with the talk. Give me one second. I'll open um, the little PowerPoint that I have here. Recording if I can stopped. Share the screen. Yes, Akashet, please make her the host. Uh, Ma'am, uh, ma can share the screen. I have enabled okay. it. Okay, Perfect. okay, okay. So, um, it is a big honor. Oops, sorry. To um, be invited to your conference. And how do I start this? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Okay. Give me one, one more minute. So um, it is exciting that you have this large conference. Um, devoted to research in uh, humanities and social sciences. So I will start with a little bit of information that is new, not new to everyone, to anyone. It is, um, can you see it now? There are some pencils and books. Not yet. No? no? Not okay. yet. All right. Well, maybe I'll just talk. Uh, instead of wasting the time on uh, something okay. that that's okay. not working. Yeah. So, um, well, I guess a little visuals would have been nice, but um, we are, um, as researchers, I believe, serve my light doing funny things. Um, we, we serve an important role. And that role is not limited to the ivory tower that some people like to um, accuse us of. They say that all those researchers, they sit in their uh, comfortable university positions and they, they're separated from the real world. Uh, no, social scientists are exactly there, right? Um, uh, and uh, people studying humanities are also uh, important people doing very, uh, very valuable job, a very valuable job in this world. So we collect, we analyze, we share accurate information about society and people's behavior, right? Is it useful to the world? Yes. So we present this information. Recording to in progress. Society in such a way that they can make use of it. It's not uh, pure science for the sake of science. Um, I think everyone at this conference is improving this world. So, and if we understand ourselves better, we understand how we as individuals, groups, and whole societies um, function, we can then improve our world, right? Ourselves and the, the world we live in. And one of the functions that our research can help with is imagine and then uh, consider possible future directions, possible future ways forward. Um, thus, we contribute to um, health and well being of individual and whole groups. Um, well, we build and defend. Um, democratic structures, we help people identify and possibly um, improve the problems that we have. Thus, we, we make the world better. We make the world better place. And um, what I personally do is I study um, language aggression. It is a difficult, um, difficult uh, topic to research very often material that I deal with is hard on me personally um, because 
I mean, we all want to see um, great people doing great things. And we know that the world is full of all kinds of things, great, not so great and awful. And uh, I personally believe that someone has to study even unpleasant uh, elements. So that's kind of what I have been doing. One of the um, recent projects that I have uh, engaged with is uh, editing a volume on um, the language of the Ukrainian crisis, which started many years ago and then blew up into full-scale so-called hot war, right from a so-called frozen conflict. And so um, we have a collection of, of uh, research pieces there that looked at um, different aspects, metaphors that were used by the leaders, metaphors that were used by social media uh, users, um, morphological blending. That is one of the chapters I co-authored with, um, with another researcher. So we looked at language. We did not look at social or political. Well, it's difficult to uh, completely uh, avoid them, but we try to concentrate on language, kind of leaving the um, military political analysis to specialists who are um, better uh, experts in those areas. And another volume that is more recent, that is, um, the focus is broader, and that's on grammatical features of um, aggressive discourse. So it's it some of that can be carefully labeled hate speech. Some can be more um, broad and better described as verbal aggression because not all ver verbal aggression um, really constitutes hate speech, but um, we covered a whole uh, we covered several aspects. And so we thought that it is good to look at some elements of verbal aggression, especially online and hate speech that have not been studied very well. So most of the pre-existing studies looked at lexical and discursive elements of verbal aggression and hate speech, and we looked at grammar. Um, so we kept repeating that we want to avoid this simplistic look at it and saying, oh, don't use this grammatical structure. It's a, it's a hateful structure. It's not the structure, it's the person, right? It's the person and they choose from the repertoire that their language allows them and it can be used for a positive or a negative uh, purpose. And so um, there were some morphological elements, such as, for example, diminutive suffixes. It, it was interesting to uh, that was a group of researchers found that when diminutive, excuse me, my, my, my light is really strange here. So <clears throat> um, when diminutive suffixes were used with non-animate nouns, they were um, diminutive, right? They, they um, indicated liking this, oh, this cute little doggy. But when it was attached to a noun denoting human, very often it was derogatory, condescending, derogatory, sometimes mocking. So again, there were, um, there was, compounding of nouns that we talked about blending and there were a few syntactic um, features. For example, the imperative mood. So a person um, who was writing a manifesto full of hate toward a particular group used more imperative verbs. The person was more sure of whatever was being communicated. So um, those are kind of the things that I have been doing. And right now I'm working on the book of, um, again, this um, online communications 
uh, of the Ukrainian war. So it is a continuation of a pre previous project, but the material that I collected is specifically from the time period after the Russian invasion of the country, after the full-scale hot war and um, uh, Russian aggression against Ukraine. So I collect all kinds of awful um, discourse that people share on social networks. And I'm not sure my uh, project will lead to any um, direct and measurable positive effects, but I hope that indirectly I'm contributing um, a little bit to a better understanding, which may lead to something positive. I'm afraid to be more optimistic about this, but that's kind of the hope. Those are my 15 minutes. Thank you so much uh, for being so time bound and at the same time, very resourceful information.